Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Sophie and this is Just Doing This Now. Doing in my way. It's time. Today I'm chatting with Jenny and Athalie from Females In It Together about their company and their plans for the future. Hello ladies, thank you for joining me tonight. Hi, yeah. how are you doing? Hi, I'm good, <laughs> thank you. I mean, it's so great to meet you all. So my name is Athalie uh, Redwood Mills. Those of you who cross it may know me from sort of flying around at CrossFit comps or events. Sometimes I'm sort of hanging out with the Kitbox guys, helping them. I've been a CrossFit for seven years. I started just before I opened uh, an affiliate with my husband, now husband. So we've been running CrossFit Deviant for the last seven years. I am a also university lecturer. That's my day job. So I'm an academic. I have two children who are two and six. So hopefully they will. Uh, make it to their third and seventh birthday. I'm Jen Wilson. You'll typically see me at some of the competitions supporting the Females in It Together stand. Also a university lecturer. So by day we are lecturers, by night we are coaches. Also a sports therapist and rehabber. And I coach at Athletes Box with Rob and the rest of the gang. So I've been crossfitting since about 2016. Hi, I'm Ness. I've been crossfitting for about two and a half years. So very late to the game because I'm 47. My backstory is martial arts, so I was a Thai boxer and kickboxer for a long time. I used to coach in kickboxing and before that I started lifting weights when I was nine with my dad. My day job, I'm um, a cardiac account manager and then I do a bit of part-time coaching in freestyle fitness yoga and uh, I'm an ambassador for Females In It Together for the older ladies. <laughs> CrossFit seems to really empower women. We have all come to CrossFit from very different backgrounds. We, we all had a similar motive for wanting to try CrossFit. It was really when we started to get involved in what CrossFit helped us to achieve and feel like, we sort of realised that there was a real need to try and enable more people and specifically more women to have access to that. CrossFit seems to really empower women. You find that a lot of CrossFit mentality has really changed the expectations. So women are seen as being just as capable, powerful, just as worthy as, as men. And so it enables us to really help women to feel a sense of just empowerment, I guess, and just a sense of understanding their own body, achieving things. What we found is that when people start on their CrossFit journey, they are usually quite underconfident and they have even if they come across very extroverted, most of them, and I'm sort of coupling women in a sort of big bubble together, but a lot of them have some sort of insecurities and, and CrossFit really enables them to establish a support network. They've got clear instruction. They've got good coaches where everybody's just trying to look out for one another. That kind of notion of we've got you, we won't let you fall. This is the place where you can just be yourself. No one gives a shit, no one's going to judge you. It doesn't matter, no one cares, as long as you're prepared to give it your all. There was a, a real struggle to get women of a certain age to embrace that and overcome the barriers, the, the, the anxiousness, the nervousness of wanting to be involved in that. And so we created FIT to really serve three different groups of people. And, and the idea behind it, our sort of tags is changing the landscape of women's health and fitness which is really just saying that it's for everybody. Like, it doesn't matter how unfit you think you are, we are here to help you as long as you want to help yourself. So the three groups that we, we focus on are sort of the younger girls, which is those that are sort of more worried about taking a great selfie. They've lost that sense of what their body can do. They're all about what their body looks like. The middle group is sort of the mums. So a lot of women, when they've had children, they struggle to find the time or they struggle to find the motive and the confidence, I guess, to, to get back into fitness. And that's when it tends to drop off. And we really want to help them and give them confidence and sort of say, look, it's OK. Don't feel guilty about wanting to take care of yourself and wanting to get back into the fitness game. And then the sort of the, the, la the last group is sort of postmenopausal. So women that perhaps have never, ever been to a gym before, who are super unconfident, who just feel like, oh my God, I can't think of anything worse than walking into a gym, but I really want to get fit. Those guys that A, are most at risk from things like hormonal cancers, 
but also that group that really just, they need a support network, they need people around them to say, you know what, you can do this, we've, we've got you. One of the initial frustrations we had, and we're talking from 20 plus years experience in the fitness industry, so we found that particularly the, the sort of older age groups of females, and maybe coming from a background where they would go to sort of a larger commercial gym and maybe receive an induction session or you know kind of one or two coaching sessions and then they'd be left to their own devices so innately they have this fear about what they're able to do and what they're not able to do we want to develop is confidence in females in that they can challenge themselves and they can push themselves to try new movements new skills etc and not fear failure because the other thing that we find particularly with again some of the kind of older groups who've maybe had that previous experience in larger gym environments is they stick to what they know and they're very fearful about moving away from that so a lot of the people we've spoken to their biggest obstruction to doing something similar to crossfit or functional fitness is actually confidence it's fear of failure, fear of looking stupid, fear of being judged by other people. For us, it was about creating a safe environment for people to challenge themselves, try new skills, join into this great community and not have that fear of failure behind them. We want to be able to say, yes, you can. If you don't do it straight away, it's not a problem because this is what we're here to do. This is how, how the coaches are going to support you. But I suppose it's just getting them in an environment where they are going to challenge themselves and feel confident in doing so and not feel like everyone's judging them or feel stupid because they can't do something. We've run surveys with some of the groups we've worked with and we've opened dialogue with some of the females we've worked with and every single time confidence comes back as a factor. That kind of is one of the initial frustrations we had generally about fitness. It actually started the conversation, didn't it, Ath, about what, what's the biggest obstruction with females but females tend to hold themselves back a little bit more than males, I guess. The beauty of it is CrossFit has, so for every movement, there may be 20 different scales. Whereas if you're in a, in a sort of more conventional gym, told to do X, you keep doing X. And there isn't that sort of step-by-step -step progression, really. You wouldn't walk into a garage with your car and try and change the engine. There's all the tools are there, but you still wouldn't know how to change that engine. Whereas you're expecting people to walk into a Globo gym, all the tools are there, but you're expecting them to understand how to do their own program and how to build their own fitness. And we are coaches for a reason. You know, most of us have been in this industry for 20 plus years and, and there's a reason for that, but it's just building those confidence to get them there in the first place, really, like that. I want every woman to feel like I do. I feel like a bloody badass. We always have that those sort of conversations amongst ourselves. If I'm passionate about something, I wear my heart on my sleeve. My background is professional sport. I swam, wasn't particularly good at that. And then I went on one of these talent ID programs. So I was taken from swimming and put into rowing and I rowed at, at a high level. Within that, I was super fit. I was, you know, felt confident, felt strong. And yet, even within a sort of, sort of you know, British setup, I came to CrossFit as a 32 year old and I mean, now at 40, I feel so much stronger and fitter. And the one thing that's different is I feel ready. I feel so much fitter and stronger. And I think with that is it's confidence. And I really wanted to just enable more women to just feel like that. I want every woman to feel like I do. I feel like a bloody badass and I love it. I love that I'm 40 years old. And I feel fucking awesome. I want every woman to feel that, you know, I want them to walk down the street and feel like if anybody was to come at them or, you know, if there was ever an, an altercation that they'd be going, you pick the wrong girl to mess with here. That is what I want every woman to feel like. And it frustrates the hell out of me that women, a, women like us are deemed uh, are almost broad with being too hard and too brash. And secondly, that women are so underconfident. So many women don't feel the, the that they can be like that and that's what we really want to kind of get out there is this environment will help you to feel more confident more able to take on challenges and that will then transpire into all aspects of your life to work to your home life just generally and and with with that sort of confidence level you can effectively just go for anything try anything it's interesting because Ath and I come from really different backgrounds in terms of sport so Ath's come from a obviously quite a high level performance um, background whereas I, I've, I've not at all I, I got into sport and fitness really really late I definitely wasn't a sporty kid but I, you know I'm the same as that I, I like to feel empowered by the fact that 
if ever there was a zombie apocalypse, I know I'd be fit enough to survive it. And it, you know, it's a little bit like what we've said about coronavirus. We feel fit enough to survive what's going on at the minute. One of the other discussions we had really early on was go to the gym feeling like you're spinning 100 plates and you're overwhelmed and you're anxious and you can leave the gym feeling like a completely different person. I suppose the best way to describe it is it's about survival. It's about ma making yourself physically strong, but also making yourself mentally resilient. And I love the idea that CrossFit gives females resilience. Jen runs the majority of our sort of workshops and, and she's very she's very modest about it but she's incredibly knowledgeable about all things body related if you've got an ailment then Jen will know how to fix it basically for me it's um I mean it's always been passionate of a passion of mine to be involved in some kind of sport of some description again not you know not to the level that Ath's done in, in the past but I've always competed at a level I kind of find it difficult to understand why people won't put their health and well-being as a priority and I find that quite sad that there's a lot of women especially of my age who feel that they're it's too late the general consensus I get from a lot of women is how do you look like that how how do you motivate yourself to do this and for me it's like this it's not about that it's my lifestyle I think females in it together are promoting a lifestyle and the women of my generation see lifestyle as a as restriction as a challenge as an obstruction it's not something that you embrace it's something that stops you doing things you do a classic thing for me is i don't know why you watch what you eat your life's too short well i'm 47 i'm not 97 i've still got plenty of life in me i still give the 20 year olds a bloody good run for their money when they're in a ward i can tell you that for nothing and that's how it should be. So it's kind of like, I, I like the fact that I can keep up with people 10, 15 years younger than me. I like that and that's what motivates me. I'm not saying that's going to motivate every woman of my age, but I'd like to think that women of my age would find me motivational because they can see what I can do. When I came to CrossFit, I couldn't run 400 meters without stopping. Yes, I could pick a barbell up, but I couldn't run. I could do a strict pull up, but you, I couldn't keep him pull up and I couldn't double under and couldn't jump on a box, just things like that. And I couldn't do any of that. And I can do all of that now. It's the best feeling in the world when you actually get, finally get a movement that you think, God, I'm too old to do. The, the, almost like the aesthetic things that you get from being involved in a CrossFit community and, and CrossFit methodology as a training program don't outweigh the mental aspects that you get to me what my body looks like is no longer on the radar to me it's well can i do x number of muscle ups can i lift that weight can i run that distance it's all about what your body can do not what it looks like in the mirror but it's ultimately that is part of the the, the byproduct of focusing on of what i can try and achieve in the gym so working towards the first pull up working towards push-ups by doing all of those things you're going to lose weight you're going to tone up you're going to look better and you're also going to feel better mentally physically and you're also ultimately going to look better eventually so it's i think that's a, the, the mental side of it is far far more important i'm gonna i'm gonna completely level with you sophie i have nothing to do with that part of it <laughs> <laughs> me, me neither i just buy it i could not find for love no money a company that could do deviant some really decent bras and, and leggings and you know like i wanted something that was nice i wanted something like lululemon-esque you know nice pretty bras that we could brand with crossfit deviant over and you know women don't wear t-shirts when they're on the wad floor they don't always wear vest tops they want to wear shorts they want to wear leggings they want to wear, you know, bra tops. So it was really about, okay, well, where can I find that? And I spent probably about a good 18 months searching and we eventually got some really good suppliers. We're going into our second year now of the company. And so I did the, the Deviant stuff and I thought, you know what, this is actually quite easy to do. And the, the sort of girls were like, wow, these leggings are really nice. These bras are really nice. I like quite calming things, quite chill things. And so what we found was actually people really liked the stuff that we've done for Deviant and just thought, Do you know what, let's see if we can sell some of this stuff. 
both Jen, myself, we fourth, you know, we're academics. We don't need to make any money from this. We love doing it. Sneakily, we can sort of use some of the stuff that we're doing to feed into our research. So obviously Jen and I publish and we, you know, we're very keen on trying to evidence what we do. What happened is we went to our first event at the European Champs and we came back from that. We went, maybe there's something in this. And it, we just found, wow, this is, people like this stuff. We were almost a bit surprised, weren't we, Jen? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. The whole idea behind the logo, obviously it's females in it together. The two eyes are conjoined. They're meant to be sort of holding hands or going for a hug as a sort of support. And I think people just really liked it. They liked something different. They liked what we stood for. Like I say, we're not just another clothing brand that is out there to make money. Like we, we want to try and invest the money we make, profits that we make. We want to try and invest that back into helping more women. The idea came and then we thought, wow, this is a really cool way of people and women that are currently doing what we want others to do, supporting and bringing in, helping fund, getting the people that aren't to give them the same experiences that they've had. So it's almost like our community giving back or people giving back by buying the stuff really. I'm gonna I'm gonna completely level with you Sophie. I have nothing to do with that part of it. <laughs> <laughs> me, me neither, I just buy it. Yeah, give the people what they want. Exactly. Yeah. Um, got to a point where I said to the GP, you need to help me or I'm going to kill somebody. I went through the menopause quite young, um, so I'm out the other side of it now. I experienced a lot of the horrible side effects of menopause. I mean, not every woman does, but usually if you've started puberty quite young, menopause normally follows suit. Also, if you struggled as a teenager with your PMS and things like that, that generally follows suit in the menopause as well. So I've had a horrific time. I was going to the doctors constantly with mood swings, like really severe mood swings, <laughs> like Ted Bundy to flipping <laughs> Dorothy, the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Got to a point where I said to the GP, you need to help me or I'm gonna kill somebody. You know, it was that bad. They insist on putting you on antidepressant, sleeping tablet, all these things. The only thing that kept me sane was training. That, that's the only thing that could balance me, if you like. It's the only thing in my day that made me feel normal. You've obviously got the middle-aged spread, which is what my mother referred to all the time. Why is it accepted when you're in your 40s? I don't want to have a spread around my middle thank you very much not only because of the aesthetic reasons but for the health reasons because the more weight you carry around your stomach the more health problems you're going to have aren't you exercise even if it's just your local combat class is better than nothing whereas crossfit you're going to get the weight bearing exercise the cardio ability the mobility all of those things combined in one environment with people who know what they're doing guide you with support network in place there as well then I kind of think it's a no-brainer really <laughs> yeah <laughs> bye yeah there seems to be a bit of a, a generational trend at the moment where females with a certain age would it would just be like oh if, you know five o'clock just get my pajamas on and sit in front of the tv with a glass of wine or whatever one of the workshops we, we ran was fit for life and it was about creating longevity in people but also physical autonomy what we want to create is women who are going to be, have physical longevity for as long as possible. We don't want to get to a certain age and have to go into a care home or have support because we're no longer able to look after ourselves. We currently sit in a pocket where females in the sort of maybe late 20s, 40s category seem to have a, a broader understanding of health, whereas either side of that we've maybe got sort of the older females who are again within that uh, trend who just want to tone up because that was what was current in the, the gym industry or the fitness industry at, at that time. Conversely, we've got sort of younger females who are very much about aesthetic and going into gyms and taking selfies in front of a mirror. So the other thing that we want to do is make sure that they understand the impacts, of the, the sort of broader impacts of, of functional fitness and health and what it can do for them as opposed to them just thinking good at the end you know kind of one of the underpinning themes for us is about creating that autonomy and physical long longevity because the benefits are endless particularly for health benefits we know of but also things like minimizing fall risk 
being able to live independently for longer it's just trying to get that across to people everybody has the right to to want to better their health and fitness everyone one of the things that fit has enabled us to do is obviously have a slightly bigger reach and think about things that we can do off the back of some of the money that we raise what we've actually been able to do is part funds so like match funding to extend our mares we've also had some sponsorship and some donations to from local builders and things to actually extend our mares and to put a studio up there so we're actually having a internal purpose-built studio and the aim of that studio is specifically cancer prevention cancer rehabilitation and just generally a space where we can take individuals who perhaps probably be intimidated by a crossfit environment but still give them the same optional scaling to be able to get them into some sort of program of being fitter and healthier and, and just fit for life really. The main scope is, as I say, cancer prevention, because at the moment there's not a great deal of provision for those individuals undergoing cancer treatment. And we know that all the evidence points to being fitter and healthier, you are more likely to be more resilient to treatments, you're more likely to recover quicker, which has a whole host of obviously positive benefits. So that studio will help us to, to almost sort of have a sole place where we can provide that service for hopefully a number of people. So that's a really sort of exciting development that effectively FITS enabled us to, to, to pursue really. I probably don't make time to do nothing. Just a reset button more than anything. There's a couple of things that I generally feel like I've got better at. We talk about the, the facts of health in CrossFit and I think sometimes you lose sight of that, particularly when you're working full time, coaching, doing whatever else you've got in your life. But certainly the, the biggest thing for me is getting the getting the basics right, getting the health basics right is really important. But once you get all those eggs in line, then ultimately the, the you know kind of the benefits for your health are just so much so much better just generally having a bit of a reset button getting your sleep and nutrition right getting your hydration right time is a construct you you set upon yourself there's always time if you if you think you've got time this is sort of made me realize is i probably don't make time to do nothing I made time to read books which i haven't done for a while my health has generally been a lot better sleep's been a lot better as a result from the whole lockdown thing is it's reminded me the importance of the factors that we we quite often forget about i guess it certainly resonates with me in terms of time it's nice not having to be anywhere at a certain time both jenny and i are still working and we're still supporting students marking etc which brings its own challenges when you've got little ones around having children is is testing <laughs> it certainly tests your patience which i don't have a lot a lot of and i certainly didn't I certainly have a lot more now. But I think in terms of this sort of lockdown period, the biggest thing for me really is training for me is incredibly important. It's important for my mental health. If I don't train, I find it incredibly hard. Rest days I find hard. I need that period of even, it's, it's just me. It's that time in the day where you can just be you. You're not mum, you're not wife, you're not, you know, Dr. Athley, Redwood Brown, and to you I like saying that you are just you you do what you want to do and you know you have your own identity and I think you know that that's sort of super important and has really hit home that that's important to have that time for yourself but I think the biggest thing for me is in every situation there is a positive there is always a positive your mindset is very much determined by how you choose to focus on the situation you are you are in what is it the s plus r equals o so stimulus plus response equals outcome the stimulus the, the situation is is it is what it is how you respond to it is how you ultimately feel about it and how you react to it so i think for me personally it's been a time where you have to really reset goals you have to reset what am i actually trying to achieve during this period what is priority at the moment you know you're prioritizing those things in a way the prioritization has become a little a little bit more primal because there isn't that oh go off shopping just do leisure things that the, the survival is just day-to-day -day primal instinct like eat sleep and mentally be in a, in, in a good place so i think yeah reassessing of goals you know what's your daily goal weekly goal monthly goal but also having a sense of almost relaxation in that we don't know when this will end. 
We don't know when, there is no time scale. We've got rough boundaries, but ultimately the fact that there is no time scale doesn't really matter. Like it's not something, why are we focusing so much on it? Get into a routine, deal with your daily day, your, your day, deal with your week and don't be afraid of changing the plan. Yeah, there are going to be shit days, but that's okay. That's all right to have a shit day. Just move on. The next day's a different day. Like, the brilliant thing about CrossFit is you just got to walk in and you don't need to think once you're there. Health and fitness is fluid. So you change day to day. So it going in with the expectation that you're going to be where, uh, where you were before you left is going to set you up for failure. Appreciate that movement is nutritious. Appreciate that that one hour of a, a functional fitness class or a CrossFit class is about you doing something that is going to better yourself and it doesn't matter where you are at the moment. Just going there, doing it is just mileage in a tank. Enjoy the process. Remember, it's a leisure activity. You're there for community, you're there for a bit of fun. Enjoy it. Don't worry about where you are at the minute. The first thing is just get to the door. The hardest thing is getting in your car and getting to the door. The brilliant thing about CrossFit is you just got to walk in and you don't need to think once you're there. So don't think, don't literally don't think, just get your gym kit in your bag, drive to the box and walk in the door. That's it. You don't need to do anything other than get to the gym and walk in the door with your gym kit on, preferably. If you walk in with a bikini on, that's probably not going to go down too well. Unless you've got a super tan, then, you know, crack on. And like Jen says, enjoy the process. The process is the, the, the journey, as cheesy as it is, your fitness and your health is not a destination. It's a continual process. You've got to embrace the day-to-day -day grind. Enjoy the grind, enjoy how it makes you feel. Enjoy the feeling of being in that bubble and enjoying the day-to-day -day grind of it. That's what you've really got to embrace and it's all you've got to do and the rest is taken care of you. Is taken care of for you. Females respond to coaching differently to males, so. So the, the big thing we'd like to do is, is obviously postpone or sort of put on hold the cancer rehab. We hope that once we get the MES in during this lockdown, that we can potentially look to launch a initial kind of pilot for the cancer rehabilitation. It was going to be September. It's probably going to be pushed back now to sort of January time. But one thing that we um, are looking to do almost immediately is some sort of, um, sort of stepping stone. So Ness, as she mentioned, is a yoga teacher. So she is looking to do some yoga. She's upskilling her qualifications to enable her to understand more how different cancer treatments affect the body, the immune system, etc., so that she can actually provide classes specific for those who are undergoing treatment. That will also lead quite nicely into sort of the cancer pre uh, prevention. So for perhaps for a slightly older generation that want to do some sort of exercise, but perhaps don't want to go straight into a, a sort of functional training, then that will enable um, her to do that. And, and I mean, I guess the beauty of it is that we we have a fundraising process we have established that now so it's a nice ongoing the, you know the more people buy the more money we have to do cool stuff plug there it enables us to to really sort of do it so that there's no cost involved for the participants so we're taking away one of the barriers that potentially would be you know, you know a struggle for some people and there's also sort of scope and plans to to sort of start more of an online platform where initially a lot of people perhaps are quite intimidated by coming to an environment with others so one of the ways that we can um, try and help them is ultimately give them some education about how they can perhaps develop some functional fitness at home to them with the with the idea that they may be a little intrigued to perhaps come and join us at either one of the workshops or a programme where they can actually be involved. There is a study that we're in the process of analysing the data of now. It was um, just over 1,200 participants and it was looking at the female perceptions of women within a gym environment, CrossFit gyms versus Globo gyms, in terms of ideal body shape, like what's your motive for coming to the gym, the whole concept around strong is the new skinny, so it will be really interesting to see the analysis of that data to see whether or not CrossFit women, and it was just open to women, whether CrossFit women have a different perception of themselves and their goals and their just general overall self-concept 
an image compared to sort of normal uh, global gym. So we hope that that will, will enable us to target some of the women in a certain way that we're able to get out to more people really and, and engage more, more women who wouldn't necessarily be confident in coming into a gym environment like ours. So we have, I guess, two strands. We have coach-to-coach -coach workshops and we have coach-to-consumer workshops. So the coach-to-coach -coach workshops, uh, similar to what Ath was talking about earlier with the, the cancer rehabilitation, what, we, what we'd like to do is launch, I suppose, almost like a coach mentorship. How, how do you obtain females and how do you retain females and how do you coach females? Because one of the things that we, we kind of found historically is females respond to coaching differently to males so ultimately you can't you can't coach males and females the same the other strand is i suppose coach to consumer and, and what that what i mean by that is running workshops specifically for females who are trying to introduce to a functional fitness environment because particularly the older females don't haven't really experienced that type of crossfit style gym before so that they might find it quite intimidating and kind of one of the things that we find is it's actually the noise of the gym and bars dropping that they find find quite intimidating because it's oh I'm, I don't want to damage anything oh I don't I don't want to hurt myself. One of the things we try and do with workshops is a just get them used to the environment, but b maybe introduce them to movements that they wouldn't typically do before. We've historically ran fit for life workshops and we actually based that on the premise of functional health. And each week we had a key movement that we went through that reflected a key movement an individual might be doing outside. The CrossFit website have just launched a really good video series for that. But it's things like, you know, how to pick up a heavy object, how to put that heavy object in a shelf overhead. So we related all the exercises to things that we thought were going to be relevant to day-to-day -day activities. And then we each week would implement a different health goal or a different task. How many glasses of water do you have per day? How many hours of sleep do you get per night? just to kind of bring people's attention to general health factors that maybe they probably wouldn't think about otherwise. And then the other thing that we've done is run just day workshops for, you know, kind of a couple of hours at a time to get more females into the gym. So it was almost like a bring your mum down, bring your sister down, bring whoever you'd like to get into functional fitness down and let's introduce them to CrossFit and the, uh, some of the uh, methods behind that. It was, you know, get them into a nice fun environment, show them that this is this is meant to be engaged and it's meant to be fun, it's not meant to be intimidating. As I said, we've, we've discussed uh, creating an online platform, which I think could have a lot of traction, particularly as I think COVID's gonna probably shape the fitness industry moving forward. So jumping on with that what we'd like to do is take what we've had in the past which is our fit for life work workshop and move that into an online platform that people can just ask, access from their own home from a coaching perspective it's probably challenged me to be a better coach because it's made me think i've got this workout i've got 10 people who've got a dumbbell and 20 people who haven't how how am i going to manipulate this workout to suit everybody in that community or to serve everyone in that community mm -hmm. and i think what this has probably done is moved us away from this whole thing about this exercise will have this outcome and actually just reinforce that the body seeks nutrition by movement so actually just moving in any way is going to be healthy and i think taking functional exercises with that you know we we focus on a barbell deadlift having a specific outcome but really when we break these movements down it's about can you lift a heavy object safely we actually took a group of uh, muslim ladies and close the gym off which just allowed them to partake in in functional fitness because they wouldn't necessarily get those opportunities elsewhere this is one of my favorite coaching stories and it's a bit about peer pressure in females as well i said to the, uh, that group at the beginning what's the one thing that you've tried uh, that you've, you've never tried before but you've always wanted to do and one of them sort of said oh i'd really love to try a pull-up and there was about nine ladies on the on the workshop. And what was interesting is this this one particular lady, we got our bands out, we got to do a pull-up. And I was like, does anyone else want to have a go? And they were like, no, 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 I, I don't know. I don't want to do that. And then there was a bit of, you know, like elbow nudging. And then the next one tried. And in the end, all of them had done, done a pull-up, banded, unbanded, whatever. All of them had done a pull-up. Uh, pull it was a really great moment as a coach, actually. It was really inspiring. So certainly if any, any of your listeners have any ideas or would like to get in touch about something they'd like us to do, we're really open to that. That, you know, that for us is we want to get as many females excited about functional fitness as possible. So if there's something that, that anyone thinks that we can get involved with, then just contact us. Please do.
this is going to sound really daft, but why should we be suppressed? Like, why should I feel that a lot of the time, just generally in the world, women should be suppressed? You know what I mean? And if they are strong and they are confident, it's almost like not knocked out of them, but it's frowned upon. Like, and I don't, and, and I'm kind of gone, I've kind of gone, maybe it's because I've hit 40, but this year I've really just gone, fuck it. I don't care. I don't care what people think. This is who I am. This is who I, I want people to just be, like you say, like I want to be a magnet for people and women, and for women specifically who, they want to be around you because you make them feel good and you have energy and you, you you know you want to bring out the best in them and just just kind of go bollocks to the men like we, whatever they can do we can do it just as well like you know let's just crack on and 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 do that together and so i think yeah maybe it is an age thing where you just get to a point where you just think do you know what what's the worst that can happen <laughs> If anyone's interested in a workshop or any collaborations with regards to promoting females within the fitness industry, then they can contact us via fit double I uh, UK contact at gmail.com. Um, obviously, we have an Instagram, females underscore in it together, and we also obviously have our Facebook account. So, any of those traditional social media, obviously, I'm sure if they contact you or comment, then we can pick that up as well. But yeah, just we're, we're all like, like Jen said, we, you know, we're open to ideas, any ideas that people have in getting more women into physical activity and health. And I think also from box owners perspective, sometimes box owners have approached us and, and sort of almost been a little unsure of, you know, how do we get more of those people involved? You know, how can we sort of break down some of the barriers that preconceived ideas that these women have about CrossFit and, and try and, you know, try and get them involved and, and through the doors. Thank you both so much. Stay <laughs> safe. <laughs> I'm going to leave it here. So thank you again and hopefully see you both soon. No worries. Thank Lovely you. to see you. So Bye, thank you. Take care. Amen. <laughs> it's like getting sent a swimming costume when you've ordered a, a bra <laughs> pop and you know, getting sent sort of some very bizarre things, like a thong, I think, when I ordered some leggings. Can't be trusted. <laughs> That's all you've got to do, and the rest is taking care of you. Taking care for you. Taking care for you. Taking care for oh. you. Is that right? Taking care for you. Of you. I don't know. <laughs> the rest is taken care of for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can put that on your bloopers movie. <laughs>